There are four signs of shock we need to recognize in the ER. For signs related to four systems affected by anaphylaxis. First cardiovascular systems, leading to shock, following respiratory system causing breathlessness then skin and inflammatory response and lastly the gastrointestinal system, or our gut. Basically, the clinical presentation of anaphylaxis varies and various factors are responsible for it. It also depends on the secretion of histamine and platelet activation factors, because both of these factors directly correlate with symptoms of anaphylaxis. First, there will be a shock. Since anaphylactic shock is a kind of shock, it presents with signs of shock. So what are the signs of shock, and how to identify it in the emergency room? First sign of shock is hypotension. As we know the shock is all about hypotension. There will be reduced blood supply to all the organs and extremities. The extremities will be cold. There will be a weak pulse and dizziness or altered consciousness in severe form of anaphylaxis. Second sign of shock is edema, an allergic rash in response to increased histamine levels and swelling under the tissue and mucous membrane. There will be typical edema below the eyelids and neck region. The third sign of shock is dyspnea or shortness of breath. There will be difficulty in breathing due to obstruction of the airway, which is caused by swollen neck and inflammation of bronchi leading to excessive secretions of mucus. The fourth sign of shock is nausea and vomiting and abdominal discomfort. One of the cases I encountered. A 45-year-old man arrived at the ER with dizziness and shortness of breath, with edema on neck and periocular region. He gave an aligned history of insect sting, and rapidly produced redness of nose and sneezing. On examination, he was tacky with a rate of more than 120, and was struggling to inhale air due to bronchospasm, facial edema with redness. His blood pressure was 160 by 90. This is anaphylaxis, given a shot of hydrocortisone and phenyramine stat and continue nebulization with duolin and budcord for a few minutes. He felt little relief, but his blood pressure suddenly started dropping, systolic below 90. Then a dose of epinephrine is administered intramuscularly. He got relief from his respiratory symptoms and his vitals started to be normal. So, it's not necessary that the patient with anaphylaxis is always present with hypotension and shock, but shock is the response if anaphylaxis progresses to the next level, that's how an anaphylaxis turns into anaphylactic shock, 